Hi, I'm Dr. Morris. Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today on the show, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about expectation values, and we're going to work through two examples where we calculate the expectation of momentum and position. First, though, let's talk about what an expectation value is. So if I have a system, a quantum system described by a wave function, I know that when I square that wave function, it'll tell me how likely I am to find a particle at a given spot. But you might be interested in knowing where on average will I find it, right? Because if you measure a quantum state different times, you'll get different answers. You might get one the first time, two the second time, one the third time. And so what we want to know is what on average are we expected to get? Let's talk a little bit in more detail about what expectation values are. They're the average value from repeated measurements on identically prepared quantum states. So importantly, what we're doing is we're preparing a quantum state, measuring position, recording it. Preparing an identical quantum state, but a new one, measuring position, recording it. We'll repeat that over and over again and report the average. That's very different than just taking one quantum state and measuring it over and over and over and over again. Because the second you measure a quantum state, you collapse the wave function and you're necessarily gonna get the same answer over and over and over again. So by analogy, you can think of it kind of like going to the conveyor belt of donuts at Krispy Kreme, right? You got all these donuts coming off this assembly line and you could go over to them and you could take a bite of one of them, record how delicious it is. Take a bite of the next one, record how delicious it is. Take a bite of the next one, record how delicious it is. And then average all of those deliciousness scores. And what you'd have then is your expectation of how delicious any random donut will be that you pull off the assembly line. And expectation values are the same thing, but for our quantum states in terms of position or momentum. How do we calculate those? Well, all we do is we take the operator for the quantity we're interested in and we sandwich it between our wave functions. So for example, the operator for position is x. So all I've done up here is I've taken x and I've sandwiched it between my complex conjugate and my original wave function. And then I'm gonna integrate it. And this guy over here, that's my expectation value. So I can calculate any expectation value if I have the operator. I just gotta sandwich it between the complex conjugate and my original wave function and integrate. Down here you see the operator from momentum sandwiched between the same two wave functions. You integrate, you get your expectation value for momentum. Let's take a look at calculating this for a specific wave function. First we'll do position, then we'll do momentum. We picked a relatively easy wave function so that we can demonstrate the principle of calculating expectation values. You can have wave functions that are harder to integrate and this problem will take a little longer, but the basic principle will be the same, which is I need to write down my complex conjugate and then sandwich the operator. So first let's write down the complex conjugate of this wave function. Well, all we do to write the complex conjugate is switch the sign of i. So this positive i over here now becomes a negative i. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug all that stuff into our formula down here. So we know that the expectation value for x is equal to the integral. And the bounds are given in our problem. And it's generally going to be whatever region our wave function is defined for. So 0 to 2 pi. And then we're going to write our complex conjugate. That always goes first. And so that's going to be the square root of 1 over 2 pi e to the negative i in x. Now we write our operator, x. And then we multiply by our original wave function, which is square root of 1 over 2 pi e to the positive i in x, dx. When we solve this integral, we're going to get the expectation value for x. All right, let's go ahead and simplify. First, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull out these constants. And we're going to combine these exponentials. So first, the constants. When we pull out the constants, we're going to get square root of 1 over 2 pi times square root of 1 over 2 pi. That's just going to give us 1 over 2 pi. You'll commonly see that when you pull out the normalization factor. Now, what happens when we do e to the negative i in x plus e to the positive i in x? Because when we multiply two exponentials, we just add their exponents. Well, what that's going to give me is e to the negative i in x plus i in x. And then we still have our x around dx. All right, let's continue to simplify. When I add together negative i in x and positive i in x, that whole thing is just going to give me e to the 0 because I have a negative plus a positive. So e to the positive 5 minus 5 is e to the 0. Same thing here. And e to the 0 is just equal to 1. That's what makes this integral easy. All right, so we still have our 1 to 2 over 2 pi, still our integral from 0 to 2 pi, still our x, but it's just multiplied by 1. That's where the exponentials went. And now we evaluate our integral. 
So we still have one over two pi, and our integral is gonna be uh, x squared over two. And we're gonna evaluate that from zero to two pi. When I plug in two pi, what I'm gonna get is two pi squared, or four pi squared over two. When I plug in the bottom bound zero, I'm just gonna get zero, so I don't even need to worry about that. Now let's simplify. Well, my twos are gonna to multiply together to give me four, and that's gonna cancel out with our top four. My pi's are similarly gonna cancel out. So I have pi squared up top and one pi on the bottom, so that gets rid of one pi. That means that my expectation value is pi. So my expectation value for this wave function for position is pi. That tells me the region in which I'm likely, or the, the average position where that electron will be if I repeatedly measure an identically prepared quantum state. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now, but for momentum. We're gonna start off with the same wave function. And once again, we have to write the complex conjugate. That's the same as we saw before. So all we do is once again, switch the sign of our i, so we get negative i in x. And then once again, we're gonna write out our formula, which tells us that the expectation value for p from zero to two pi is equal to our complex conjugate first, square root of one over two pi, e to the negative i in x. And then we have to write our momentum operator. Our momentum operator is a little more complicated. It's negative i h bar times the first derivative of that wave function, the original one, which is gonna be square root of one over two pi e to the positive nx. And that's all dx. All right, so now what we're gonna do when you do the momentum operator is evaluate that derivative first. That's always gonna be the first thing you do is evaluate that derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. This might look a little neater if we pull out our constants first. Those guys are just constants, they don't depend on x, so we can go ahead and pull them all the way out and have one over two pi. Still the integral from zero to two pi of e to the negative i in x. And we can even actually pull out our i times h bar also. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get our negative i h bar. And this makes that uh, derivative look a little nicer. We'll see that it's just now the derivative of e to the i n x dx. So we've simplified, and now taking the derivative will be a little easier. So we get negative i h bar over 2 pi, and still integrating from 0 to 2 pi. And once again, uh, we're going to see that these i's cancel out, even after taking the derivative. So what's the derivative of this guy? Well, we just get back the same thing, e to the positive i in x, times, using the chain rule, the integral of what appears up there, which is going to be i n. Let's do that in white, shall we? i n dx. So all that we did is we brought down what was next to that x. When you take the derivative of e to the something times x, that something comes down. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and simplify. And what you'll notice is we can bring these constants out front. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out front. Taking the constants out front always makes your derivatives and integrals look a little neater and feel a little easier. So we pull that out and that's gonna give us i squared h bar n over two pi. And then we have the integral from zero to two pi. Notice now we have this same term here, right? And recall that when we have this guy, we're just gonna add those e to the, those e exponents together, and that's gonna give us e to the zero, which is gonna give us one. So this integral is even easier than the last one. It's the integral of one dx. So when we integrate one, we're gonna get x, and then we're gonna evaluate between zero and two pi. And that makes this whole thing just give us a factor of two pi. So we're gonna replace that integral with what we'll get out of it, which is just two pi, negative i squared h bar n two pi, all over two pi. Now, let's simplify. Our two pi's cancel, awesome. Our i squared is gonna give us negative one. Remember that i squared 
is like saying the square root of negative 1 squared, which is just going to give us negative 1. So we're going to get out a negative 1 times our negative sign, h bar n. Those negative signs are going to cancel, and we're just going to get h bar n. That's equal to our expectation value for momentum. So there you have it. That's calculating the expectation value for momentum. What we did there is just applied our operator in between those two wave functions. So if you have any questions about how we did this, please ask them below. Thanks as always for watching Real Chemistry. Click that icon down there to subscribe to receive more updates and more chemistry videos like this one. Thanks for watching.